بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا مولاي يا رسول الله وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا مولاي وابن مولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء سيدي يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما لم أنس زينب بعد الخدر حاسرة لم أنس زينب بعد الخدر حاسرة تبدي النياحة الحان فألحان مسجورة القلب إلا أن عيونها كالمعصرات تصب الدمع أقيانا تدعو أباها أمير المؤمنين ألا يا والدي حكمت فينا رعايانا نرفع يادينا We raise our hands This time we go next to the shrine of Lady Zainab in Sham to support her in this evening, which is the evening of the 11th of Muharram. Let's show our support for this lady who is all lonely tonight. يا زينب يا زينب يا زينب يا زينب يا زينب إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أيام قلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين. We send the first of our loudest of salawat for the love of Lady Zainab Al Kubra bint Amir Al Mu'minin. The second of our loudest salawat for the noble lady, Lady Um Al Banin, the mother of Abul Fadl Al Abbas. And the third louder salawat for all the women and children who were left behind after the death of Abi Abdullah al Hussein on the day of Ashura. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. It is very important, brothers and sisters, that we understand that the event of Ashura did not end with the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in the afternoon of the 10th of Muharram. And that the whole of the event of Ashura 
the whole of the revolution of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, the master of martyrs, had many aspects to it, but the main two important distinctions in the revolution of Abi Abdullah al Hussein was from when he left the city of Medina until his martyrdom on the day of Ashura and the second half is after the death of Abi Abdullah al Hussein with Lady Zainab becoming the first lady and the person directly responsible for continuing the movement which her brother Imam Hussein started until they were taken as captives from Karbala to Kufa and then from Kufa to Sham and then their return from Sham to the city of Karbala for three days to commemorate the Arba'een, the 40th of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and then to return to live in the city of Medina. Here we want to recap on some of the major events which happened after the death of Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. What really did happen? After the enemy of Allah, the cursed Shimr ibn Dhil Jawshan, severed the head of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, then raising the holy head of the Imam on top of the long spear, Umar ibn Sa'ad ordered that 10 men on horsebacks to go and change the hooves of their horses, install new hooves on, their sh on the shoes of the horses, so they trample on the bodies of the martyrs of Karbala. Here some of the companions or some of the soldiers in the camp of Umar ibn Sa'ad, they came forward and said, amongst the companions of Imam Hussein, we had some of our cousins and some of our relatives. Okay, you killed them, we fought with them, that's fine, but we will not agree for soldiers to go on horsebacks and, and start trampling on their bodies. So every clan, every tribe started to withdraw their martyr, their family member, their cousin from the battlefield. You know, Omar ibn Sa'ad ordered that those who were killed from his camp to be buried. But who was not buried? The ones who did not have any relatives who were in the camp of Imam Hussein. Even those companions who, for example, Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi, he had his cousins and his tribal members, they were in the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad. They came and they took the body of Hur and they buried him. That's why today we see that Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi he is buried a long distance away from the burial site of Imam Hussein and the companions. Hur is buried in the area called Al-Hur, which is near Karbala. This was one of the examples. Then, Umar ibn Sa'ad said, okay, I want the horses to go and trample on top of the bodies of the family members of Imam Hussein. Again, people came out from the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad and said that, no, we will not allow our soldiers to go and trample on the body of Ali al-Akbar. Why? Because Ali al-Akbar's mother was related from a long distance to Yazid. So they did not allow horses to trample on the body of Ali al-Akbar. They said, okay, go and trample on the body of Abbas and Hussein and Qasim and the rest of the family members. 
Again, Shimir ibn Dhil Joshan came out and said, Abbas's mother is related to my tribe. I don't allow anyone to go and trample on the body of Abbas. The mother of Qasim was also related to someone in the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad. They did not trample on the body of Al Qasim. So who remained? Remained one person who did not have anyone to come out on the day of Ashura and to claim his body. And that was Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Why? Because his mother Fatima was not present in Karbala. His father Amir al muminin was not in Karbala. Lady Zainab, it's as if she says, the poet is saying, Bas wil ma adhum ashira. The ones who did not have a tribe or clan to claim their bodies remained without claiming for their bodies and burying them. So they changed the hooves on the shoes of the horses. And then he said, Ya khayl Allah irkabi wadusi jism al Hussein. Lady Zainab is sitting next to Imam Zain al Abideen. She asks him, Yabna Akhi, what is that sound I hear? Imam Zainul Abidin said, Oh, Auntie Zainab, that is the sound of the bones of my father's body being treaded upon by the horses of Umar bin Sa'ad. You see, brothers, they started treading and mutilating the body of Imam Hussein until the bones of his rib cages was stuck to the bones of his back. Nothing remained of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Was that it? No. They came, they surrounded the body of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They started looting, stealing the valuable things on the body of Imam Hussein. For example, Bajdal, he was one of the enemies of Allah in the army of Umar bin Sa'ad. He came, he noticed that there was a beautiful ring in the khunsur, in the small finger of the right hand of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He came, he wanted to take the ring out of the Imam's hand. That's after the death of Imam Hussein. He couldn't. Why? Because there was dried blood on the ring. So what he done? He found a broken sword. He came and he cut off the finger of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and he took the ring. This is one of the things that happened to Imam Hussein after his death. Is that it? No. Another man came. He wanted to steal the pajamas of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He came, he started opening the strings which had tied the pajamas to the Imam's body. Imam raised after, that's after his death. And this is the miracles of the body of Imam Hussein after his death. He raised his right hand. He placed it on the string so this enemy of Allah could not open it. He brought a sword. He cut off the hands of Imam Hussein. Imam brought his left hand, again placed it on that part of his body. Again, that man severed the left hand of Imam Hussein. So Imam Hussein's body was mutilated. Nothing remained safe in the body of Imam Hussein. Again, they came. They started attacking the women and the children in the tents. Lady Zainab was told by Imam Zain al Abidin, Amma Zainab, alaykunna bil firar. Tell the ladies, tell the women, tell the children to start running for their lives. The children, the little boys and girls, the sisters of Imam Hussein, the wives of Imam Hussein, they started running on the battlefield, not knowing where they are going to go. The enemies of Allah, they started burning the tents one by one until nothing remained for Ahlul Bayt. They started looting the camps of Imam Hussein, stealing everything they could find in front of them until the night of Ashura came. They came and told Ibn Sa'ad, Oh, Umar Ibn Sa'ad, if you, unless you want to kill the women and children as well, don't give them water. This family has not drunk any water for three days. At least give the women and children some water. So they brought water. 
they placed it in front of the children of Imam Hussein. Now the children, they don't know what to do. They are thirsty, but they don't know what to drink. So they came, they started looking at the water containers and they started crying. One of the little girls came, she took some water and she started running to the battlefield. Her auntie Zainab said, where are you going? She said, I am taking water for my father, Hussein. Why? Because I heard him saying, And Lady Zainab is looking for all the women to protect them, to bring them all in one camp. Umar ibn Sa'ad ordered his army men to install one big tent so all the children and the women can stay in there for the night. Everyone was there apart, apart from one lady. Lady Zainab came out in the middle of the night, in the night, in the darkness of the night. She started looking for this one lady. Do you know who that lady was? That lady was the mother of Abdullah al-Radhi. She was looking for the body of her little son. Lady Zainab tracked. She started hearing a crying sound, a mourning sound. She heard someone calling, where are you, my son? You did not drink any milk. I had no water to give you, but now I have drank water. I have milk now. Where are you, oh, Abdullah? Lady Zainab came to her and said to her, who are you looking for? She said, Ya Zainab, I drank water and now I have milk in my chest. I want to look for my six month old baby. I know he is still thirsty, but do you know what happened to the body of Abdullah al -Radhi? I will tell you. When all the tribes and all the clans, they wanted to take something with them to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad so they can receive the bounty and the gift. Every, every tribe came and took the head of one of the companions. They say there was seven, more than 78 heads which were carried on the day of Ashura. One tribe remained. They did not have a head. They came to Shimer ibn Dhil Joshin. Oh Shimer, we are a tribe. We contributed. We came with you to the battlefield. We want to take something to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad as well. Shimer said, I have one more soldier that his head has not been separated. Where is this soldier, O Shamir? He said to them, when Harmala hit the little son of Hussein, Hussein took him behind the tents and they buried Abdullah al Radi' behind the tents. Now look how much cruelty they had in their hearts. They said Hussein buried his six month old baby behind the tents. Go and find out where that baby was buried. They didn't know. So how, what way did they find the burial site of Abdullah al Radi'? Do you know? They came, they carried spears, and they started digging the spears behind the camps of Imam Hussein. When a spear used to come out with blood on top of its head, they knew that there was someone buried there. Only Abdullah al Radi' was a little baby. They dug the grave. They took out Abdullah al Radi' and Ajarakumullah. They cut off the head of Abdullah al Radi' and they placed it on top of the head of the spear. Rahimallah, Manada wa Sayyida. I want to ask you, O oh human beings, O oh mankind, how, how big is the head of a six month old baby for them to cut it off and put it on top of the spear? This is what they done to the head of Abdullah al Radi, the six month old baby of Imam Hussein. Then they were one head or two heads which were taken straight away on, on the day of Ashura. They took it straight away to Kufa. That was the head of Imam Hussein and they say the head of Abel Fadl al-Abbas. But in the strong traditions, it is said the head of Imam Hussein. Here, one of the enemies of Allah called Khawli. Khawli was given the head of Imam Hussein 
to take to Kufa. Khawli took the head of Imam Hussein. He arrived in the city of Kufa at night. The, the palace's gates were closed. Where shall I take the head? Shall I go back home? My wife is the follower of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. She will never allow me to take the head of Hussein. He had nowhere to go. So he went home. He placed the head of Imam Hussein in a stove, in an oven where they bake the bread, and he covered it. His wife, in the middle of the night, came out and saw there was a pillar of noor, of light, from her house going to the skies. She came to the source of that light. She uncovered the oven, the stove. She found that there was a head in, in that stove. She took out the head. She started cleaning it from the dust and the soil that was in that stove. Then she fell asleep. She saw that lady, Fatima to Zahra, Ummu al-Imam al-Hussein, Rasulullah, Amir al muminin alongside some of the malaika, came down from the skies. She took the head of Imam Hussein from the wife of Khawli. She said, I am the mother of this qatil. Ana ummu hadha shaheed. Lady Fatima took the head of Imam Hussein, placed it in her in their lap, and she started cleaning the blood and the dust from the head of Imam Hussein. She started speaking to her son, Bunay, Limada Kataluk. Bunay, oh son, did you not tell them who you was? Did you not tell them that you are the grandson of the Holy Prophet? Did you not tell them you are the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib? Did you not tell them you are the son of Fatima to Zahra? Lady Zainab all alone in Karbala. Lady Zainab tried her best to remain awake because she had the responsibility to look after the women and children. But because she was so tired, she fell asleep. In her dream, she saw that a figure, a man was coming close to the camps. She said to him, oh man, I ask you by Allah to protect us because our brothers and our men are killed. We don't have anyone to protect us. That man said, Daughter Zainab, I am your father Ali. I am your father, Amir al Mu'minin. I have come from Najaf to protect you and to look after you. Now, in the middle of the whole burning of the tents, one man, which is called Hamid ibn Muslim, I narrate to you this story and I will move on, inshallah. Sheikh will continue the majlis. Hamid ibn Muslim says, I saw a little girl, her, her clothing was burning, she didn't know what to do. I came closer, I wanted to to distinguish the fire I said to her I want to help you distinguish the fire she said ya hadha anta lana am alayna are you with us or against us she, he says I replied I am neither with you or against you she said ya shaykh hal qara'ta qawl Allah ta'ala fa amma al-yatima fala taqhar qala laha na'am yes I have read she said to him ana yatimatu al-husayn that was little Sukaina. And then she said to him, Al Karata Kaula Lai Ta'ala wa Ammasa'ila Fala Tanar. He said to her, Yes, I have read. She said, I am asking you for a favor. What is your favor, little girl? She said to him, Show me the path of Najaf. I want to go and call my grandfather Ali ibn Abi Talib. I want to tell him, Oh grandfather, where were you? When they were killing my father, Hussein. Where were you when they were hitting my auntie, Zainab? He said to her, Najaf is too far. It is going to take you days and nights to get there. She said to him, okay, no problem. Take me to my uncle Abbas. And I al Abbas Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon 
وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين It is the night of the 11th of Muharram Let's raise our hands and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he doesn't take us out of this world until he provides us with the intercession of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to hasten the, the reappearance of our awaited Imam Sahib al Asri was Zaman. And you give us the opportunity to be one of his soldiers in his army. And that the Imam is pleased with us. Allahumma rdi anna Imam al Zamanina wa ajjil fi faraj maulana Sahib al Asri was Zaman. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Rahimallahu man qara al Fatiha ma'as salawat.